on to lesson three. Now, in lesson one, we talked about the motions of the celestial sphere, the sun, the moon, uh, the rotation of the earth, and how we see all those things. In lesson two, we took a historical perspective and threw in the planets, the wanderers. Uh, but in attempting to explain the motions of the planets, we ventured into the realm of physics uh, with Newton. And we're going to continue on that trajectory talking about things a little physics-y. And we're going to abandon the solar system just for a couple lessons here. And as I said on the first day, the course will bounce around a little bit. Now, lessons one, lesson two, uh, they're clearly on solar system related topics. And we'll get back to the solar system in lesson five until the end of the course. But to really understand uh, the observations, the modern day observations, and, and all the various things that we know about the solar system and how we know what we know, we need to stop and talk about light, the nature of light. And so that's lesson three. Nature of light. Lesson four, we'll talk about the telescopes, which are the instruments we use to collect light. But light, it's a pretty um, deep topic, and we'll, we'll get into it in some depth. Astronomers don't just take pretty pictures. You may think, yeah, we have telescopes, we point at the object, we take a pretty picture. We look at the pretty picture and draw some conclusions, like that galaxy looks like a spiral, this one looks like an elliptical, this planet looks big, this one looks small. But actually, the vast majority of what we know doesn't come from imaging, but from something called spectroscopy, when we take the light and we put it through, say, a prism or some other dispersing agent and separate it into its various colors. White light is made up of red and orange and yellow, green, blue, and violet. And there are additional uh, types of light beyond the violet, ultraviolet, etc., and beyond the red, infrared, etc. And through dividing the light up in this way and looking at how much light is at each particular wavelength, we can learn a lot of things physically. We can learn temperatures, we can learn motions. Is it moving towards us or is it moving away from us? That's pretty easy to figure out. We can learn compositions and densities and magnetic field strengths and all sorts of physical information that enables us to make a more complete picture than just taking a picture. We can actually figure out what's going on physically. So we're gonna spend on lesson three learning about light, learning about its properties so we can exploit those properties. In lesson four, we'll talk about the instruments that we've developed and are continuing to develop um, to take advantage of the nature of life. Now, just as an aside, I should mention, that's not the only way that we know things about the universe. How do we know what we know? Astronomically, as I just said, light is the big one. This is like 99.999% of the information that at least we're able to use. There's a lot more stuff that comes to us, but as humans, with the technologies that we have, this is what astronomers make use of. But there are other things and things on the horizon that are potentially interesting. We can get information from particles, um, not light, but uh, things like protons, neutrons, not so much the neutrons, but Protons, electrons, particles that travel across the expanse of space, maybe ejected from some explosion or maybe ejected from solar flares. Those particles do make it to Earth, and we can learn some things. As they impact our atmosphere, we get cosmic ray showers that hit the atmosphere, and bunches of particles spray down. We call these things cosmic rays. They're not a type of light, just particles that hit us. And we can learn a little bit about the universe. Uh, most interesting type of particle and uh, this is something we'll hit a lot in 102 if you take the course, is the neutrino. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Not the neutron, but neutrino. Greek letter nu. It's a really lightweight particle. Much, much, much less massive than the protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's only in recent years that we've been able to measure whether it has any mass at all. A very lightweight, very non-interactive. Low mass, very low mass, very non-interactive. The sun is releasing bajillions of these every second, and many of them pass right through Earth without touching anything, passing through you, 
but some of them we do detect and we can learn things about the sun, about supernova explosions. And we'll talk more about that in 102. But we can learn a little bit about the universe from particles. And on the horizon, gravity waves. This is also something in 102. I just kind of teasing future topics if you take the other course. Gravity waves. So this is a prediction of Einstein's theory of relativity. That if you have massive objects in motion, accelerating, decelerating, orbiting one another, so this comes from Einstein, they'll give off ripples in the fabric of space and time. They'll lose energy. Like if you have two stars orbiting one another, according to Newton, they'll just or, you know, orbit forever and ever. But according to Einstein, they'll spiral into one another, eventually collide. And we do see evidence for this. And the idea is they're losing their energy by sending waves out through the fabric of space and time that we call gravity waves. And people have been busy for the past decade or so building devices to actually measure. Like when these gravity waves come by, you get distorted. First you get distorted this way, and then that way, and then this way, and then this way. And kind of like a cartoon, but it's just on like a microscopic nanoscale actually. Very, very difficult to measure. You never see it with the human eye. Um, but presumably these things are going through us all the time, distorting our fabric space and time, and devices are being built, and probably in the next decade uh, we'll start to have detections of gravity waves, and that'll be yet another avenue that we can learn information about the universe. But all that said, the vast majority of it now uh, comes in the form of light, and so we're going to focus on that.